Uh, so, um, hey guys, um, Aaron from More 4x4 and Russ from Red Ranger, also known as White Line and also known as little... Nolophane. Nolophane, there you go. Uh, so, I've just thrown Russ in the deep end, like I do with all these sales guys coming in to try and sell us stuff. Um, uh, and I guess what we wanted to do is just have a quick chat about the about white line upper control arms because uh, we believe we more four by four I believe that they're different to some of these other arms we've we've been using in the past uh, physically when we look at them um, but the fact that we that we actually haven't had any failures of these arms is a really positive sign so we just want I just wanted to pass on some knowledge and I think. Russ is really well armed um, to sort of help uh, uh, answer some of these questions that I've got about them and the reasons why White Line have maybe done what they've done. So, um, so I guess the major thing that, that resonated with me when we first met and started talking about them was, was the, the pivot end. Yes. Yeah. The so the bushing, the bushing itself. Um, I think the main thing was that uh, it was a maintenance free bush, um, so no grease, uh, lifetime warranty, and also the, the housing that the bushing was contained in was forged yeah, okay. uh, versus just a steel tube uh, welded onto a tube. Okay, so so uh, so what I what I heard you say was that this is a maintenance free. Yeah, c come in and have a look look in here. Um, so this is actually so a Teflon line sleeve. Um, then you've got our polyurethane outer bushing. Um, so the, the Teflon sleeve is bonded to the polyurethane uh, and then it's inside a steel sleeve then pushed into the actual control arm. Um, the benefit of having the Teflon sleeve against your crush tube is once that's inside the tube, um, there's no play within the actual crush tube, but it is free pivoting within. So you don't need any grease, uh, it's maintenance free. Uh, so you can get mud, dirt, water, whatever in there, um, and you don't need to do anything on a service side of things. Okay, well, so, well, hang on, is that right? I mean, what I'm asking you, uh, I don't, that's not totally true, because at some point that's going to wear. So what do you do? What do you do when it wears? Is it just, you just replace the bush or what? So, you... so we give a lifetime warranty on all our uh, polyurethane products. Yeah. Um, so if that wears out in the lifetime that you own the vehicle, um, we'll replace the, the bushing or the arm. Oh, I'm not kidding. On what's available. Okay, well, that, I didn't know that. There you go. There you go. Okay, so I'm learning, so thanks very much. Um, um, I think I think the main reason why uh, in this application we can give a warranty on this sort of thing is uh, the difference between a, a rubber bushing and a polyurethane is the rubber bushing and crush tube is actually bonded to the, the bush. So imagine that this tube is all one piece. As the arm flexes, all the guts of the bush will start chewing out. Right, yeah. Whereas our application, there's actually never any actual torsional uh, movement within the bush. Right. Um, so there's no load except for the, the weight of the vehicle. Right, okay, yeah, awesome. So, yeah, warranty. Yeah, okay. good. Yeah, that's amazing, yeah, because I, so I actually never knew that. I've never actually, so I've never used that in any sales capacity to, to sell an arm. I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so look, th thanks very much for your honesty. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. So what I also noticed... Um, and what, what we'd seen on a couple of different types of arms was this, this, this tube where it connects to this, this pivot end. Yes. In other brands, what we'd seen is that we'd seen like a butt weld uh, to this, this bush carrier. Yes. It was just welded basically at the base of this tube. And some yeah. other manufacturers then, I think after some failures, where, where you'd get this tube and bush carrier separation, yeah. that... They then started putting some gussets on the top here. Yeah, just welding on extra strength just to cater for the, the, the weakness. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We've actually used a, uh, a forging on the end, um, and then we've used a, uh, a robotic welder to do a 360 weld all the way around. Yeah, because so that looks really neat. So welds are clean, they're strong, mm. uh, they're tested um, to exceed uh, standards for ADR compliance. Okay, so is that is that is that is that a, a butt weld there or does is there some penetration inside the tube? No, it's it's butt welded. Yeah. Um, but 360. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Um, so essentially that's as strong as the, the steel tube itself. Um, yeah. So if it was to bend it's likely to bend at any point on the, the arm itself as well. 
Okay, good. Um, the other cool thing is that the carrier end where the ball joint is housed is also forged. So the ball joint carrier is also forged? Forged piece, one piece. Yeah, Yeah. right, okay. Uh, and, and that looks like the same, same uh, process. welding process? Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's awesome. And um, and so that looks like, so from our previous discussions, yes. uh, that's an OE sized ball, ball joint. joint. Correct. Yeah. So if that fails, you can have a spare one off the shelf from the parts store. Um, yeah. Just in case, if you if you're worried, yeah. Um, so you can fit it uh, while you're on the road. What about the what about the one that comes out of the arm that we remove from the vehicle? Uh, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Same 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 part number. Okay. Essentially, yeah. Okay, great. So um, so so uh, so after we after we fitted these these arms to your car, just ask for your old arms back, um, um, or ask us. We'll we'll pull the ball joint out or whatever, and we'll give it back to you. Yeah. You may as well. You may as well keep it in your kit. Um, I think that's a huge benefit. Yeah, emergency yeah. spare on the road. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, because we've seen, I've seen, I've seen these ball joints separate. Yeah, separate before. I've seen, I've seen your picture of a separated ball joint not that long ago. Yeah, not ours, but yeah, someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course, right. Um, uh, so, uh, what, what else? Uh, so these are these are ABS. A ABS um, headlight leveling, whatever the the vehicle itself has. Sure. I uh, will have make sure the bracketry is there. Uh, also, you know, things like. Uh, wheel speed sensors and so on yep. um, which all play as part of the ABS yep. um, I guess another key feature within the, the arm is the orientation of the ball joint yep. um, most other um, arms on the market the ball joint is in a very parallel position with the arm Right. ours is actually positioned so when the car has actually got the lift in it so you've got the droop the ball joint itself remains neutral Right. So you're already okay. So so neutral as in not being. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I've got no chance of moving that right now. Not but, right now. Yeah. Yeah. So so in a neutral posi position yeah. in the cup with a lift. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, whereas everyone else's, it'll be up like that. So the ball joint's already in a flex position. Oh, right. So if you go through a, a, a big pothole or a, you know getting some flex in it, yeah, the ball joint's already under extra stress. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's why we've designed it to be at that. Uh, Take the angle position. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and and so and so so the reason why we um, the reason why we install these on and it seems like we're doing more Toyotas than anything else. Yeah. Um, I don't want to pick on all Toyota fans out there at all. Uh, but but uh, we know that when we I just wanted to mention Toyota because it seems like we run out of adjustment yes. with Toyotas before other others mm -hmm. like. Ranger BT fifty. Yeah. So, so what um, we're fitting these to to reintroduce some caster and camber and camber. So, so so these arms will give you a between two and a half and three and a half degrees added caster. Yeah. And then negative one and a half degrees uh, camber. Yeah, yeah. Correction. Yeah. So when you do the lift, you're actually getting your alignment settings. Yeah. Back to what a factory setting is. Yeah. And maybe with a little bit more uh, caster. Yeah, awesome. so it feels safer on the road, drives nicer, um, doesn't feel as dangerous. Yeah, and, and your clearance is within everything as well. So tires, um, the spring itself, um, and also the position of the wheel within the guard. Yeah. So all the clearances are all all free. Make, yeah, yeah. Free for you to do whatever you want with your your lift. Yeah, because sometimes sometimes we do need to, because uh, because we do our we do our own wheel alignments, um, and because we're doing the suspension in house and the wheel alignment in house. We understand that relationship, and um, so what we find is that uh, in our, ex our experience with other clients is they go and get a suspension system done somewhere, and then and then the the wheel alignment process is outsourced. Yes, and they often my clients end up here because the tires are wearing badly, or um, yeah. So there's a bit of a disconnect between the installer and the wheel aligner, but because we do it in house, we see firsthand exactly. The long-term effects mm. of having a, a crappy wheel alignment, you know, after a suspension lift. I think as well, um, a lot of guys are doing lift kits, and then they're they're not thinking about the control arms. They're saying, oh, "I'll I'll do it later." But the drama is, they do a lift kit, uh, put their big mud tires on, do a few thousand kilometres, and realise that the the actual tires are wearing out. Mm. Uh, then they go, "Oh, there's something wrong with my alignment." That's where the control arms come in. Mm. Um, so I guess that the investment in the arms is. Saving you the, the cost of replacement tyres in a uh, short period. Yeah, and but also I think I think you made a really good point there that 
the 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 older labour thing, uh, it actually costs end up costing a heaps more because mm. I know that when we do that suspension system, this is we actually call this a supporting modification. So we install these for nil extra cost um, for labour yeah. while we're doing it. So it's just the cost of the part. So, but if you come back in and do this later on, you know this could cost you three hundred yeah. bucks or four hundred bucks extra to get it installed later. Yeah, because if you're doing the shocks as it is, then yeah, it's it's, it's not it's, it's, it's no more time really for my yeah. team to, to to chuck it in, you know, um, while it's uh, while it's there. Yeah. So, and what what this also does is that. So, I just wanted to go back where we were talking about the the com the the disconnect between the suspension fitter and the uh, and the wheel aligner. Yeah. The wheel aligner um, potentially, uh, it's not in his best interest to make sure the wheel alignment is amazing. Yes. Because as soon as that car chops out tyres, they're coming back to him because they're often connected with a tyre shop. Yeah. So there's nothing sinister behind that, but they're not going to spend heaps of time trying to get the wheel alignment amazing. No. They're going to make sure that it drives straight and the steering wheel straight and then it's likely out the door. Happy days. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and look, even uh, a vehicle that's been lifted without the controller, yes, you can get your alignments back to a somewhat acceptable mm. position, but mm. you, you're adding a negative camber, you're adding caster, you're making the car safer to drive. Mm. Um, so it's not, it's not just an um, uh, alignment spec, it's a safety aspect as well. Mm. Um, I know that when you're driving down the road and you have very little caster, uh, the, the car doesn't feel safe. Mm. Uh, you add some extra caster in there, the car yeah. has a better feel, um, feel safer. Yeah. Um, for you, your family, and your and your dogs, whatever. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah look, I, I know that I know that when we we fitted them to we fitted the the control arms to to uh, to my Ranger that my partner Danny. Yeah. Um, Danny works in the, in the business with us. She does our accounts and. And answering the phone and stuff like that, uh, the string noticed a difference straight away. Straight away. So, <coughs> did I? Did I? Did I actually pay for those arms, or did you give them to me? I can't remember. I can't remember. I think you might have gave them to me. Yeah, I think I gave them to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I just want just for the for the, the right. sake of transparency and honesty. Yeah, yeah. You know that 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 um, I believe in the product, not because you gave me a free set, yeah. which is amazing. And oh, like, you got to try before you buy, so. <laughs> uh, that's our mentality with our dealers. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, look, and, and it actually worked. Yeah. So, um, so I felt the vehicle, my Ranger, was much more stable. Yeah, and it didn't, it wasn't tracking and carrying on uh, with the you know thirty three inch tires that are yeah. on my vehicle. So it felt much better for me running this. So, yeah. um, is there anything else like that? That kind of any random oddball. Um, detail that you know about that you you know some interesting fact about these arms that you could uh look you could share with us i could probably tell you that uh these are adr compliant yeah. um the main reason is because of the ball joint being in a fixed location yep yeah. um there are other uh, arms out there that have a sliding ball joint um essentially if the top nut came undone then the ball joint could fall yeah. out yeah um you have ones where there's uh, adjustable turnbuckles on the actual arm part itself yep yeah. Same thing, comes loose, mm. falls out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've made ours to uh, meet all the ADR compliance. Mm -hmm. um, so original mounting points, uh, yeah. bracketry needed for ABS wires and yeah. so on. So uh, you know you don't have to go running a million zip ties. Look, you can run a couple just to secure it further if you want. But all those mounting points, fixture points are all the same. Yep. Um, so that's what gives us that compliance. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So there's 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 still one thing that's outstanding between us with knowledge knowledge base and improving our knowledge here. We're still waiting for you guys to come back to us on the situation with GVM upgrades. Yep. Yeah. You know, so um, so uh, we we can't be sure that that where situations, particularly with Land Cruiser Land Cruiser two hundred series, that where these you know, high spec GVM, GVM upgrades, four ton, four ton, up to four ton yep. of GVM upgrades are being undertaken that potentially these aftermarket control arms aren't suitable, but 
the factory ones might not be either. No, and that's why we, um, first of all, we independently test the arms. Yeah. Um, to I'm, meet, not, I'm to, not trying to put you on the spot. No, no, they're to, to meet our expectations within yeah. the market. Yeah. Um, but we are currently getting them retested again for GVM. Yeah. Because um, we've had a lot of requests for the, the GVM upgrades. So yeah. um, a lot of people asking for the data. So we're just retesting them. We know they're going to be fine uh, just to get the accreditation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and look, and, and I had a chat to, I had a brief chat with your category manager, mm. Ina, and he said that he had, they had tested it to, to um, original spec, yeah. you know, with an X factor of, that was much, much higher. Oh yeah, they just keep going until to, to they do break. Yeah, um, uh, just, yeah, yeah. Just for, I guess, for fun maybe, but. Um, Cause that's yeah. cool, right? I mean, like there's yeah. nothing cooler than seeing a, something destruct or bend yeah. or fail. You know, so I, I get a bit of a tickle out of oh, that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, it'd be great to it'd be great to get that feedback mm. because I think that's a, that's information that's not freely available. No. And I think that we can make a difference to to our followers, to um, just with knowledge and information and sharing and being transparent and honest. Yeah, definitely. I think it is a is a, a huge strong point. Yeah. 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 Hundred yeah. percent agree. So look, it, it's it's not hard to see the, the strength of them. Versus an OE, I wish we had an OE arm here, but just the, the, the quality of the welds and yeah. forgings and tube steel and all that, it's uh, next level. Oh yeah, look, I've been in this industry a long time. I absolutely can see the the quality, the time and effort and R&D that's gone into this. It's If I was to put a different uh, manufacturer's, aftermarket manufacturer's arm here, I could show you firsthand exactly the differences G'day buddy, won't be a second. Just doing a bit of filming, one sec. No. Um, uh, that it, you know, very clearly could show you the difference. But what we'll do is we'll commit to coming back. We'll get the standard arm. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a, I think we're doing a Ranger next week. Yep. Uh, Monday, Monday next week. We'll keep so, that arm. Yeah, so we'll keep the original arm and we'll come back and show you, show you the differences between these, these two arms. Definitely. Um, and do you think that's enough time for your team to come back with some detail about the GVM or do you need a bit longer? Probably a bit longer. I know it's a uh, sample arm's been set for the testing already. So awesome. yeah. um, hopefully we'll get data back soon. Well, for, for, for me, throwing you into this, you know, spur of the moment uh, in, uh, in, interview. Yeah, um, interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> You've done, you've done so well, buddy. Thanks, Thank you so much, Russ. It's Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I hope you learned something from that. If you like it, thumbs up, follow, subscribe. That's amazing. Thank you for your support. If you want to see more, just support us. Thank you so much. Ta. Cheers.